Hello everyone, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back. And today we're going to be talking about the threat of not just one, but possibly two or more giant coastal storms that could be trekking through the east over the next couple of weeks. As always, be sure to like and subscribe and to watch the whole video to get the best weather content. And we're just going to get right into it here. So basically, we're going to be talking about potentially one or two coastal storms to be tracking through the east and off the east coast um, over the next two weeks, probably less than two weeks. But like in between um, like one and two weeks out, we do have some storms that we need to watch and to, and to take notice of. So let's first focus on on how the how the conditions are lining up like on the ground. So this map is basically showing us the percentage of normal precipitation that we have in the last 30 days. So basically greens and blues and purples is like a surplus of precip and the yellows and oranges and reds are a deficit. And basically what we're going to have is kind of the storm track through the south is what the general model agreement is. Of course we're going to get into the models uh like right after this map. Um, and then something could track off the coast. Maybe it's off the Carolinas. Maybe it's closer to the Delmarva. Um, still a little bit of uncertainty to that. But on the northern coast of the Carolinas, which, spoiler alert, could be one of the targets, uh, target zones, uh, should this coastal storm emerge, well, we're talking 50 to 75% of your normal precipitation, maybe up to 75 to 90% at best. So that means, you know... 50 to 66 percent of your normal precipitation and if we look at the departures from normal because i know percentages is nice but in terms of like actual departures we're about one to two inches of rain below normal and you might be like okay that's not too bad but then you look at the normal and the normal is only three or four so if your normal is three or four three to four inches of rain and you're one to two below that you know that, that could cause a concern right so that could be like, you know, a good chunk of the percentage of your precipitation. Because remember, it's it's within the last 30 days. So let's get into the modeling here. Because it's a little bit further out, we're going to be looking at the three main global models in this video. And we got some additional maps afterwards. So we have the GFS, the European, and the Canadian models. Starting with the GFS, I have all these models starting at Monday afternoon. And now we're going to take it through time here. You can see some shower and thunderstorm activity over the southeast. And some increased thunderstorm activity. Um, and some heavy rain, some thunderstorms moving across here. This is by next Wednesday on the 26th, so basically a week from today. And you can see that a low pressure forms off the coast with a pressure of 1,000 millibars. And we see some pretty heavy rain uh, scraping along the Carolina coastline. And don't forget, this is going to be feeding, into, feeding some wind onto the shore as well. And we're going to take, um, take a look at the winds as well. Um, once, you know, maybe like... A few days from now, maybe I'll do another update on this should this continue because the models have had some consistency with this. It's not like I just saw this one model run like, oh, it's going to be a danger. Um, but I definitely did see a consistency with the, with the models I was watching this yesterday and the day before that. And the GFS and the Euro especially were definitely kind of consistent with it. So I'm definitely uh, watching in here very closely the uh, possibility of some massive coastal storms here. And they could be pretty large. And we're going to take a look at what the different models say as well. Um, but here's your low pressure here. And here is your wind flow kind of going right into Cape Hatteras. And in that in the update that I do in the future, should it um, should the storms be more, should the models be consistent? Uh, we're going to see if it lines up with the high tide, because if it lines up with high tide, that could spell trouble as well. So not only do we have the main circulation on the GFS model here, this is by next Thursday morning, by the way. We have another low center right here. And you can tell by the circle that's kind of closed off here. right? And you can see some heavy rain to the north of it. So it's going to it's kind of going to be like two little lows inside of a general low pressure center, if that makes sense. Right. But still, that's where the main low is. You can kind of see it moving it off the coast. All right. And by Thursday, it's gone. So basically, it's going to be next Wednesday and then maybe through early Thursday. It's kind of what the GFS is saying right now. So let's take a look here at the sustained winds. Now, this particular wind graph. On pivotal weather it kind of shows the winds better offshore like it doesn't show much over land but you can still see um the low pressure here and tropical storm force winds for the north carolina coastline right here right? anywhere in that red 34 knots is 39 miles an hour tropical storm force winds i'm not saying it's going to be anything tropical i think this will just be a coastal storm should anything happen um because, and if it does become something of course i'll keep you updated on that it would probably be a subtropical storm should anything come of it 
So it winds about 40 knots here. So we're talking about 45 mile an hour. And these are like sustained winds um, off the coast of the Carolinas here and, and even on land, like on Cape Hatteras. All right, you can see those winds are only going to get stronger, right? Now we see a bigger chunk of red um, over in this region. But again, still pretty much the only land mass that's affecting is like the air banks. Um, but still, winds of 40, 41 knots and even offshore, um, 48 knots. So closer to 50, 55 miles an hour in terms of your wind speeds before the low kind of pulls offshore. All right. So definitely going to be a wind problem. Could see some minor storm surges up to a foot. And if again, if it or maybe even two feet. And if it coincides with high tide, that could also be even worse. All right, but again, something to talk about at a later date. So if we talk, take a look at the uh, total rainfall, you can see its initial track over the southeast will leave two to four inches of rain, basically from Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia through South Carolina, right? Uh, so another part of the state, I believe around Columbia, we got Atlanta, Georgia in here as well. Jackson, Mississippi you can see two to four inches of rain, as well as the Outer Banks. Um, according to the current model, around the four to six or four to eight inch zone, of rainfall will look to stay off the coast from now but again that could change and of course we also have different models to look at speaking of here is the european model so as we go here through the uh next week you can see the rainfall kind of tracking through the southeast kind of like it's kind of a more spread out area of rainfall we see it moving through and then a low pressure center you can see it its initial formation kind of right here we see a little low pressure but there's also one here so the two sort of, this one kind of backs off and they kind of combine into this 999 millibar low. And that's already spreading rain even up through DC and Baltimore, even Philadelphia. And you can see the low pressure center here kind of spewing those uh, winds onshore. And then you can see it moving to the north even stronger, 994 millibars of pressure. And you can see where the winds are, right? In these tightly packed isobars uh, right up in here into Virginia. And of course, the southern Delmarva Peninsula. 988, 985, the winds, or sorry, the pressure gets even stronger, and so do the winds. You can see again where the area of strongest winds is, go are go is going to be. And again, it kind of just sits there, it spins around a little bit, strengthens, then kind of moves offshore. But this could definitely be, you can just see by the size of the pressure isobars that the waves are going to be radiating out, and there's going to be a lot of wind and, and a lot of rainfall too. So the timing, uh, they actually have the initial area of rain coming through. Um, late next Wednesday night into Thursday uh, of next week and then the main event kind of like kind of like part one then part two uh, coming in as we head through Friday morning all right with the low pressure forming here and then lasting through the day Friday and into very early Saturday so timing again a little different but the general consensus is that there could be at least of these two models right now is that there could be a significant storm on the horizon and yes, the, I believe the GFS was showing it too, but the European model definitely has some snow in the higher elevations of West Virginia. Considering May is almost here, that is uh, pretty insane. Uh, if we look here at the rainfall totals over the next 10 days, you can see the European much more widespread than the GFS in terms of that two to four inch zone. All right, <laughs> just wait till, you, wait till you see the Canadian model. Um, with some pockets, um, some of it due to the storm, some of it due to other storms, but some pockets of, uh, you can see four to six and anyone that like that yellow goldish color, I'm not going to circle every single one, but in the general area of the Tennessee Valley, Mississippi Valley, and then Virginia beach, um, of course, part to the Northern Outer Banks, uh, could even see four to six inches of rain as well. So definitely looking like a hefty total of rainfall. All right. All right so here we go. We're starting the wind map here next Tuesday afternoon. And as you can see, as we work through Wednesday, Thursday, and again, it kind of shows it better when it's when the winds are offshore for some reason that it doesn't show it too well over land. But next Thursday night, right into next Friday, you can see that wind area starting to kind of build up. If we kind of play it back, you can see it's starting to build up. Uh, some wind speeds of about, you know, 25 to as much as, again, in that red zone, above 34 knots, aka that tropical storm force winds, but most likely not a tropical storm right now. But once the low forms down to the south here, kind of treks to the north, you can see a much more widespread area um, of those 34 knot winds, aka 40 mile an hour winds, building up off the coast of the Del Marva and the Mid Atlantic as the storm treks to the north and east. And you can see, I mean, remember these are sustained winds as well. And you can see it kind of starting to wrap around the low at this point. <laughs> widespread area of 40 mile per hour winds, and even some. 
of 50 mile an hour winds plus sustained off the coast. And you can see that kind of wind angle, that direction is pointing right at the Outer Banks, right at Virginia Beach, kind of uh, paralleling the coastlines of, you know, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland. And you can see the low kind of starting to move offshore, but of course that, that wind coming on the western side it's still going to be hitting the Outer Banks. It's kind of parallel, but it could still be hitting Virginia Beach and the Outer Banks there, even as the storm's on its on the back side. All right. So now we're going to look into the uh, GFS model, sorry, the GDPS, the Canadian model. And you can see the low in a similar fashion to both models, honestly. We see a wider swath of rain, even wider than <clears throat> the GFS had it. Wider swath of rain tracking through. Um, and then you can see through next Thursday, the low is definitely forming further to the north. It's over the Midwest, right? We kind of see like this um, frontal system, kind of like a warm front, if you will, kind of starting to lift up. You get that band of rain that's kind of here, going to be here and pushing to the north and east. So you'll see that uh, as this um, as the model run plays out. And there you go. The low kind of sort of transfers. We kind of see this in the winter time with nor'easter sometimes. The low sort of transfers right here. We see some heavy rain moving through uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey. Um, and then the low moves up to the north, but still, it's still a coastal low. It's right over the coastal area. You go, still going to see a lot of waves, a lot of wind, low pressure center, of course, being closer to the land <clears throat> to get those effects closer to land. All right, and you can see even a little bit of snow over western Mass and southern Vermont there on the Canadian model. All right, so definitely could be causing some issues here as well. So what does the wind map look like for the Canadian model? Well, let's take it out here as we head over the... Uh, middle of next week all right you can see the wind kind of you can see it coming from the bottom of your screen right as that other piece of energy comes to meet up with this low all right you'll see it starting to form already out here 40 mile per hour winds even some stronger winds over the delmarva peninsula all right and then as the low moves up that band is going to come with it and ahead of that band is going to be those are going to be those stronger winds so Canadian model is kind of a little bit further north over the northern mid-Atlantic. Um, even the European kind of had it in the middle there. And the GFS kind of had the threat a little bit targeted to the south. But if you look at the timing here of the threats, uh, again, you can see it coming in Thursday afternoon. Then through Friday, it's going to be when it's affecting the northern mid-Atlantic and moving into the northeast by Saturday. So each model has a special tail, if you will. And here... <laughs> Here is the rainfall, yeah. yeah. So just for comparison here, here's the GFS, all right? Just note that red zone, that two to four inch or two to three inch uh, rain amounts, really. I wouldn't say not existed, but kind of a thin layer. We look at the, where is it? European model, right? I mean, it's definitely more widespread. It's kind of covering a lot of the South and the Mid-Atlantic. And then if we look at the Canadian model, it's just covering pretty much the entire screen. All of this is two to four inches of rain and a much more widespread area of four to eight inches. Philadelphia down through Millville, New Jersey, right? Even uh, West Virginia and Virginia, right? right? Maybe around Snowshoe could even see four to eight inches of rain, all right? Or whatever doesn't fall as snow, because remember, there could be a little bit of snow in this area as well. So do keep that in mind. But still, tons of rainfall and even down through South Carolina, four to six inches of rain could be expected. Now, this area is a big part of what we call the Mississippi River watershed, right? which is why I kind of pointed this out as a concern. Pretty much anywhere in this yellow area is a, is a watershed to the Mississippi River so that the rain that absorbs into the ground or into the rivers is going to eventually flow down to New Orleans. So if we're going to see that much, I mean, pretty much this whole area on the Canadian model, or this whole area, was in the two to four inch rainfall zone. So that could be a heavily contributor to uh, the Mississippi River of flooding to the south, especially in Louisiana. So kind of like they kind of think of it kind of like a bottleneck, right? You have all this traffic coming in. Imagine it's like it's all cars. And then when it gets into this little area, it's going to get backed up. So definitely be on the lookout for some flooding, especially if you live downward of the Mississippi River. All right. So here we go. Taking a look at the winds, uh, the wind gust, if you will, in the European model. Let's take it through next Thursday, next Friday. And of course, the windy premium tag is on there, um, but it's still letting us view the maps. So I'm taking that as a win. Um, if we look here, you can see off the coast of like Cape Hatteras, you can see some extremely strong wind gusts closing in on 68 to 70 miles an hour. 
as the storm treks off the coast here. So uh, takeaways here, definitely looking like a big threat uh, should this uh, pr prevail. And again, this is still like a little over a week out. But since the models are consistent with it, I think it was definitely significant enough to point out to you that there is a danger for these massive coastal storms, or at least a stormier pattern to be continuing over the next week or two. And you can see the some of the wave heights here, 16 feet in terms of those offshore waves and even as much as uh, 20 foot waves uh, in this zone right here. Yeah, there's 20 foot. And even <clears throat> like 12 foot waves, eight, nine foot waves, um, right on shore you know new jersey delaware uh, virginia beach cape hatteras so definitely be on the lookout here over the next week or two thank you guys for watching i will keep you updated i am the weather dude signing off till next time i'll catch you guys in the next video